Thank you. Starting with measurement, I think we want to have a definition. So I've found a couple definitions for measurement. Quantitative observation, and it's also the act or process of assigning numbers to phenomena according to a rule. Um, the thing to note here is that measurements have to be reported in units. The slide here shows four different types of measurements or measuring tools that have been used. Uh, at the top are the eyes. The eyes have been used for centuries for measuring and observing. The bottom right hand corner is the hand and also specifically the thumb. The hand has been used again throughout centuries and is still being used today for measuring the height of a horse. Uh, Debbie informed me that the thumb is also in French called the pouce, and pouce means inch. So that is where the inch that we use today came from. The next one uh, is the horse's backside. Those of you that don't know, the horse's backside is actually where the width for the current railroad tracks came from. Going back to the days of the Romans, the width of the wheels on the chariot were based off of the width of the horse's backside. Those created ruts in the, in the ground on the roads, which eventually became the roads, and then when it was transferred over to the train, they used that same width. The last is a micrometer, probably a little bit more familiar to most of us. It's gonna be a little bit more precise, and it's gonna be a little bit more accurate. Just a little. <laughs> the key here is that over time, man has used the hand, the horse's ass, and the eyes to use for measurements. <laughs> but as we've become better and we've asked more from our equipment, we've asked more from ourselves, we found that we've had to come up with more precise and more accurate instruments for measuring. So I want to talk a few minutes about precision, accuracy, and uncertainty. In any kind of measurement, you're going to have these three items. <coughs> precision is reproducible. How often can you measure the same thing and come up with the same results? Accuracy is how close or how far your data is from the true value. That helps you determine how much variation you have. And finally, uncertainty is doubt. How much doubt do you have in, the, in your readings, in your results? Decisions are made every day, both personal and professional, based on data. Personal life, a good example is a car. You base buying your car on data. How much does the car cost? How many miles per gallon does it get? Is it a V6 or a V8? Does it have the dual overhead cam or not? All of these, all of these are examples of data that help you determine what car you want to buy. In the professional life, the data is used as well. Buying companies, do you ship the parts or do you not ship the parts? Is the process stable and able to be ran or do you have problems with it and you need to shut it down? Another example in accuracy is sales versus profit. With accuracy, you want to make sure that the information, the data that you're collecting is going to be true and is going to tell you the answers you're looking for. Sales versus profit. You don't buy a company based off of sales, you buy a company based off of profits. They could have all the sales in the world, but if they're not profitable, who wants to buy them? So when you're looking at your data, you need to make sure you're looking at the right data. Um, finally, you want to look at the first two and make sure that from an uncertainty standpoint, do you have the precision and accuracy that reduces your uncertainty? What do we need to know about why we're measuring something in order to measure it usefully? We need to know what we're going to use it for, how it's being collected, and who's collecting it. I've got three examples uh, I want to talk about for just a second. Independent audit before an acquisition. We talked about buying a company. Obviously, from the standpoint of the company trying to sell itself, the better their data looks, the more opportunity to sell the company. So they're going to try to use their financial statements to entice you to buy the company. 
typically what you would do to make sure that the uncertainty is removed there is you bring in an independent firm to look at the data, make sure that it does represent what they're saying it does. Miles per gallon of a vehicle. Obviously, from an OEM standpoint, they're going to be wanting to get the best mile per gallon numbers they can get. So they're going to be looking at optimal settings to try to improve that. More, the higher the numbers, the higher opportunity to sell in that vehicle. Uh, the last incident is a adhesion problem. Uh, this is specific near and dear to my heart because it's one I've just gone through. Um, we at Grand Rapids Spring and Stamping make, one of the products we make is a bracket. That bracket is used for a rain sensor to basically tell you that there's rain on your windshield and activate your windshield wipers. Again, we're not engaging the brain, but maybe we should once in a while. So in this specific case, the part is actually bonded to the glass. Uh, our customer, the OEM, actually called in complaint saying that the parts were falling off the glass. They weren't adhering properly. We started doing problem solving on it. They came to the root cause that it's due to the dye lube we're using on the product. Now, at this point, they hadn't even asked us what is our process, how do we manufacture the parts, what's done with it. These parts go through a wash process before we ship them to the customer. There's testing done on them to make sure that the manufacturing lube we use in the stamping is removed. Customer wasn't aware of that. Their reasoning for problem solving and coming to this root cause was they went to a local dye shop, they took a sample of their dye lube that they use in their process, they brought it back, rubbed it on our parts, put the a bonding solution on it, put it on the window, and it pulled off. So their root cause is there is dye lube on the parts because it failed when we put it on and it, and it didn't bond properly. <laughs> In the meantime, we're doing studies on our own, and we're doing FTIR analysis and finding that any of the dye lube that's on the parts is being removed through the wash process. Since then, they've done several more DOEs, and now they found out that it's actually an alkaline condition caused by the washing process, and they're asking us now to use vinegar in the wash process to drop the pH. So we're in the process of running more samples for them so they can bond that one up. I have a little bit more opinion of thinking they're moving in the right path now compared to where they were. <laughs> so, at least they have some DOEs to help back up some of the data that they've collected and support some of the reasoning. I want to talk about measuring frequency. This became a hot topic with our group when we first met. Um, wouldn't think it would be that big of a subject, but we all had a lot of experiences <laughs> with measuring frequencies. Uh, initially, we know with startups of new tools, new processes, you typically want to measure the process or the tool more frequently. You want to make sure that you've got a controlled and stable process. We also know through problem solving that when you do have a problem, you typically will want to collect more data. So that, again, we can justify the frequency. In some cases, though, that frequency is being justified or mandated by the customer. Uh, Dave Quick, who's not with us tonight, shared an interesting story. One of the companies he worked for in the past uh, had a customer come in. That customer was a black belt Six Sigma registered person. They had some concerns with one of the die castings at the company he was working for. Again, without understanding the process, he decided that they needed to go in and measure 25% of every part they produced for multiple dimensions. Um, what he didn't seem to understand is that most of the processes didn't even affect the dimensions he was having to measure. So we want to talk about value added. That's definitely an example where there's no value added. Um, similar instance with a company I used to work for. We had a customer that always wanted wire diameter measured, capability study. Measure the wire diameter on a spring before you ship it. We went through and tried to explain to the customer the tolerance is on your printer so why we don't even buy wire with that wire of tolerance. And even if we could, it would never even go through the machine. The machine would not even make the part. Um, again, the customer wouldn't understand from their standpoint, fit, fun, form, and function, wire diameter 